So it costs $750,000 for this Shark Tank product to just get started. In this video, we're gonna talk about how the design of that product caused that problem, how it could be redesigned for 3D printing to eliminate most of that cost, and then the whole new business model that the founder could have used to have basically zero cost to get started. So Lugbug recently appeared on Shark Tank, and you can actually watch the clip over on YouTube right now. But Lugbug is basically an ergonomic kid carrier handle. Normally, you have to carry the carrier around like this, which twists your wrist in a weird way. Lugbug rotates your grip so that it's a little bit more comfortable to lug these kids around, because who really likes them anyhow. The product itself sold for $39.99, and the founder had spent $750,000 getting set up. And over the course of three years, they sold a grand total of about $300,000. Not great, but it's early in the company. But let's dig into why it cost so much for this product to get started. The founder said that it was basically tools and manufacturing and patents. Now, generally with this part, you can see that it's composed of about six injection molded parts, maybe more depending on how many internal pieces it has. But you have the handle, the main hook, and then the little clasp over the main hook that each need two molds to make them. Now, those molds would range somewhere between twenty dollars to $50,000 a pop in order to just get started to get your first part off. And hopefully they did it right on the first try so that you didn't have to have those molds recut or refined, which probably had to occur. But looking at that, you have about $300,000 in molding costs there just to get the mold set up. And then you purchase the actual inventory itself, where you're gonna say, okay, I just spent a few hundred thousand dollars on the molds. Now I need to make 10,000, 100,000 of these things so that I can actually sell enough of them to pay off the molds. So then you lay out a bunch of cash to store all that inventory, which by the way, has to be shipped across the ocean and then also stored in a warehouse for an extended period of time. So you have this large initial cost, a large follow-up cost, and then large long-term costs if the item isn't moving super fast in order to be able to sustain this thing. This is why hardware businesses are so hard. There's so much upfront cost in order to even get started. But then after the manufacturing, which we will come back to here in just a moment, there was also the patents. Patents are a form of protection that you can absolutely pursue if you want to, but there's a way to be even better than patents, which is just to be competitive and innovative and create better variations. He had six international patents, four domestic patents, of most of them utility. So there's about 10 to $20,000 for each one of those things to have them filed after they've been approved, which is also not a small cost. But all of that, could have been avoided. So let's go ahead and talk about how 3D printing could have saved him a bunch of work. So we went ahead and mocked up a prototype of the lug bug as we would imagine it being 3D printed. A few things that we did initially with this is we followed the overall design of the thing to where it rotates your grip around the handle so that you're now 90 degrees with the handle of the kick carrier. We still have the front clasp and we have a back hook that the handle can go into. Overall, the basics of this design are normal. You make sure the chamfer is bottom so they can fit on the print bed. You make sure that it's all within plane so it's all strong. We have a print in place hinge so there's no additional assembly and that latch has just a little bit of interference so that you know the kit isn't gonna fall out. Although this design could be simplified even further in order to just have that hook right there and then you don't have to worry about having this extra assembly right here that could potentially wear out or fall off or just adds cost to the part. Overall, this part is very, very durable. It won't ever break or wear out. It's a single monolithic piece. So rather than having six injection molded pieces, you have a one single 3D print. This is not assembled. This is all one part, which is impossible to do with traditional manufacturing. And in fact, things like this really fat area right here that's fully enclosed is technically impossible with injection molding because there's so much material right there. If you were to try to shoot this with a mold, that would shrink and create this really ugly area. But since 3D printing doesn't have large concentrations of material, you're able to create these really thick parts that are strong and durable and reliable, but you don't have to worry about the shrinkage with all of this stuff. Same thing goes with the hinge. 3D printing is able to create impossible geometries, so we're able to create a single part in a single go that has a mechanism inside of it that's not a separate part. No separate assembly, nothing else. This part could be mass produced inside of one of our giant print farms for a similar, maybe slightly higher cost than the cost of the lug bug, but given the fact that they were selling it for 40 bucks and their initial manufacturing cost was 431 for the individual part and 531 landed with uh, packaging, all of that could still be increased. They have plenty of margins in order to increase the cost of manufacturing if they wanna do lower volumes. And in that case, rather than spending $750,000 for the molds, they could have spent 
a thousand dollars for the first hundred of these things and then they could have sold them out found out if people really wanted to buy them and then they could have went and chased down patents so seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars could have been reduced down to a thousand dollars if they had gone with 3d printing initially now, there's a few things about this that aren't quite as good. The original lug bug itself has a rotational handle to give a little bit more pliability there. So that is a design trade-off because while you could do a similar sort of hinge mechanism up here to where this handle could be two separate pieces that rotate, it probably wouldn't have a very smooth feel compared to what the current lug bug is. But again, the question is, do you want a perfect product or do you want to find out if anybody even wants to buy the concept? On Shark Tank, lug bug had this challenge with the sharks. None of them were really customers because they were like we don't really see the value in it and you haven't sold enough for anybody else to really show that they've seen the value of it you're doing okay but is it a sustainable business we don't really think so that could have been proven out way earlier on if he had just gone with a 3d printed design that was produced in smaller batches and then scaled up and quite frankly if they were worried about the scale of 3d printing if you made the first thousand of them with printing and then walmart called and says we need 10,000 of these here in two weeks that's still doable here at our largest print farm we're spec'd out for 3,000 machines. So we can knock out about 10,000 of these things in, I don't know, three or four days. But all of that is still not even relevant because we still haven't talked about patents. So since 3D printing is able to iterate very, very quickly, this gives you the ability to create a lot of different variations of this. Lugbug could have created a pink, a blue, one with a twisty handle, one with a rigid handle. They could have iterated through many different versions of this and see which ones sold. This does a couple things. It eliminates some of the need for patents because people will rip you off even if you have a patent anyway. They'll create some variation. Hey, look what we did here on this video. But a patent is protection of an existing design or an existing utility and application, which might not be brought enough to protect you from copycats in different formats. But competition and being more innovative can protect you for long periods of time because you understand your product better than anybody else. They could have designed this thing right here, posted it on Shopify, uploaded the file to us, and then whenever somebody makes an order, we would print and ship it to their customer form. This would have had zero upfront startup costs. They would have had to create a model and that was it. But then they wouldn't have to deal with the scale problems of storing stuff up in a warehouse or anything else that comes with mass production injection molding and mass production printing. We make 10,000 parts for you and you store them in a warehouse until you sell them all. If you went the print on demand route, they could have just plugged it into a Shopify store and gone. They could have had product launched in a couple of weeks. And then rather than pursuing the multi-year process of getting patents where everybody's still looking at your product and potentially ripping it off if it's successful, they could have put all of that resources into improving the product and iterating on the product and creating more variations so that they innovate faster than copycats can follow up. And since the manufacturing process is so fast and reliable and has zero startup cost, they can try all kinds of different things. And then they could expand a little bit wider. Once they have this customer, what's another accessory? Maybe a cup holder on the side of the kick carrier, whatever it happens to be. All of that is doable with mass production printing. So hopefully this was useful to you. The design of these type of parts is actually a very simple example. And Lugbug is a very prime example of how the cost of manufacturing hardware can just break a company. But 3D printing can save them and give them so many competitive advantages and so many new business models that had never existed before. So hey, Lugbug, if you guys are still around and you're looking to expand your product offerings, go ahead and give us a ring and we can help you out with getting something like this mass manufactured. Have a great day, everybody.